In the enchanted world of Disney, where dreams are brought to life, a shadowy realm of forgotten wonders exists, a realm of abandoned and unfinished projects. Today, we take you on a chilling journey through time, revealing the ghostly remnants of some of Disney's projects that never saw the light of day. From David Copperfield's Magic Underground to the beastly kingdom and mysterious lands left in ruins, join us as we uncover the hidden stories behind 15 abandoned and unfinished Disney projects. Number 15. Discovery Island Disney is renowned for its love of hidden details in their movies, and the same goes for its parks. However, there are some hidden details that Disney would rather keep hidden from fans. One such example is Discovery Island. Back in 1974, just three years after Disney World opened, Discovery Island came to life. Located near River Country, it was situated on a naturally formed island in Florida's Bay Lake. The island was teeming with lush vegetation and fascinating wildlife, including rare birds. For a quarter of a century, guests flocked to Discovery Island, arriving in boats to experience the wonders of nature. But in 1999, something mysterious happened. Discovery Island vanished from Disney's catalog of attractions. It wasn't demolished or repurposed. It was simply abandoned, left to the mercy of the elements. Over time, the once thriving island faded into obscurity. The cages that once housed animals now resembled decaying cells in an asylum, and the unidentified creatures that once called the island home now rested there as lifeless remains. To this day, the island remains off limits to visitors. However, in 2017, a brave YouTuber named Matt Sanswa managed to gain access to the deserted island. He captured the haunting images you just witnessed and shared them with the internet, providing a glimpse into the island's decaying beauty. But how did Discovery Island fall into such a tragic state? Disney has never officially stated the reason for its closure, though it is believed that poor attendance and high maintenance costs played a significant role. Just a year before its closure, Animal Kingdom, a newer and larger park with a wider variety of animals opened within the main park. This led to a decline in attendance at Discovery Island as visitors flocked to the newer attraction. Eventually, the animals were relocated to Animal Kingdom, and Discovery Island was left deserted. Number 14. River Country Sebastian from The Little Mermaid once said, It's better down where it's wetter. That could mean different things, but we can all agree that water parks are a lot of fun. In the 1970s, the Imagineers had the idea of creating a water park for Disney World Florida. They called it River Country, and it was located on the edge of Florida's Bay Lake. The park was designed to look like an old-fashioned swimming hole with waterfalls and coves. River Country was a big success and considered revolutionary because it was one of the world's first fully themed water parks. However, the park had lost its charm by 2001 and closed for good. Newer and better water parks like Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach had been built, making River Country seem outdated and forgotten, like a toy from Toy Story. One reason for the park's closure was that several accidents happened there. In the 1980s, three children lost their lives in the waters of River Country, including one unfortunate incident where a brain-eating amoeba entered a boy's nose and caused a fatal infection. These incidents contributed to an uneasy atmosphere at the park. After its closure, River Country was left abandoned and became a creepy sight. The once clear waters turned murky and filled with moss. It remained hidden from Disney World visitors, and the remnants of Disney magic that once existed there only added to the eerie feeling. In 2018, Disney announced plans to build a new lodge called Reflections over the ruins of River Country. The park was completely demolished and construction is still ongoing as of 2023. Today, River Country exists only in the memories of those who visited it. The park is gone, and the new lodge will take its place. Number 13. Beastly Kingdom Walt Disney loved animals, from mice to cats and dogs. He wanted to have real animals in Disneyland, but it didn't happen at first. Some animals started appearing in Disney resorts later on. However, it wasn't until 1998, long after Walt's death, that his dream came true with the unveiling of Animal Kingdom in Disney World. Animal Kingdom is a place in Disney World that houses real zoo animals and also has a section called Dino Land with animatronic dinosaurs. But did you know that another section called the Beastly Kingdom was originally planned? The Beastly Kingdom would have been a place for mythical creatures like unicorns and sea beasts. There would have been a fire-breathing dragon in a tower guarding its treasures. 
guests would have entered the tower and been greeted by bats planning to steal the dragon's riches. Then, they would have gone on a thrilling roller coaster ride around the tower with the bats until they faced the dragon, who would try to breathe fire at them. The dragon would have been the biggest audio animatronic ever built by the Imagineers. However, Beastly Kingdom never became a reality. Today, you can still see remnants of it, like the dragon in Animal Kingdom's logo. The reason for this whimsical idea being abandoned was Michael Eisner, the former chairman and CEO of Disney. Caring for real animals turned out to be more expensive than expected, so Dino Land and Beastly Kingdom had to be reconsidered. Since Disney was already working on the CGI movie Dinosaur at the time, Eisner decided that Dino Land made more sense financially. Sadly, Beastly Kingdom had to be canceled because they could only afford one of the two ideas. Number 12. Fire Mountain During the 1990s, Disney was very successful. They produced popular movies like Aladdin and The Lion King one after another. This period, from 1989 to 1999, is often called the Disney Renaissance because it marked a return to success after a string of unsuccessful projects. However, as the 90s came to an end, Disney started to move away from the classic fairy tale formula that had made them popular during that decade. As the new century began, Disney came up with several bold movie ideas, but unfortunately, many of them were commercial failures. Towards the end of the 90s, the studio started working on a movie called Atlantis, The Lost Empire. They were confident that it would be a success, so they also started planning an Atlantis-themed attraction for Disney World. However, Atlantis did not perform well at the box office. It cost $120 million to make but it only made $186 million during its entire theatrical run. This was disappointing compared to the huge success of The Lion King, which made $768 million during its original theatrical run alone, with a budget of $45 million. The failure of Atlantis was a financial burden for Disney, and it led them to lose confidence in their future projects. This, unfortunately, meant that they had to cancel a potentially amazing attraction called Fire Mountain. Fire Mountain was planned to be a large volcano in Disney World's Magic Kingdom. The characters from Atlantis would be featured, setting up a base camp at the bottom of the volcano. There's not much information available about the specifics of the ride, but it was described as a roller coaster that would twist its way around the volcano. The ride would start with a traditional cart, but the track would shift from being below to above, making the cart hang and giving guests a sensation of flying. Although few details are available, one can only imagine the other exciting illusions, thrills, and lava effects that the Imagineers had planned for the Fire Mountain attraction. Whatever the case, it surely would have been a popular ride. Number 11. The Excavator Dinoland USA at Disney's Animal Kingdom is an exciting land inspired by a vast sand and gravel pit where fossils can be discovered. In the original plans, there was an additional attraction, an incredible roller coaster called the Excavator. This unique ride was designed to resemble an ore car track, reminiscent of the area's previous life as a quarry before fossils were unearthed. The imaginative students of the Dino Institute had transformed it into a thrilling ride for their enjoyment and to aid in transporting the larger fossils they had found. The excavator was envisioned as a thrilling runaway mine cart roller coaster. Throughout the ride, guests would encounter signs cautioning about safety hazards as the cars zipped past rib cages of dinosaur skeletons and artful sculptures created by the resourceful students using various discarded materials. The intention was to create a thrilling experience that immersed visitors in the world of excavation and discovery. Originally, the plan was for the excavator to open simultaneously with Countdown to Extinction, ensuring that this part of the park would attract a significant number of guests. However, the excavator roller coaster was ultimately cancelled due to the escalating costs associated with housing and maintaining numerous live animals on site. Instead, Countdown to Extinction became the anchor attraction for Dinoland, captivating visitors with its captivating storyline and thrilling adventure. To fill the void left by the cancellation of the excavator, the Primeval World roller coaster was constructed in its place. This new attraction provided guests with a unique journey through time, encountering prehistoric creatures and experiencing exhilarating twists and turns. Number 10. Villain Mountain 
Disney villains are the bad guys we love to hate. They play important roles in Disney movies but are not always featured prominently in Disney parks. However, did you know that there were plans for a ride dedicated exclusively to Disney villains? In 1986, Tokyo Disneyland introduced the Cinderella Castle Mystery Tour. Guests would go on a seemingly innocent tour through Cinderella's castle, but it would gradually become spooky and transform into the lairs of various villains. The success of this attraction led the Imagineers to consider bringing some wickedness to the Western Disney parks, resulting in the concept of Villain Mountain. Unlike a roller coaster like Fire Mountain, Villain Mountain would be a flume based ride similar to Splash Mountain, but with a spooky twist. Guests would ride in ghoulish gondolas adorned with skulls, reminiscent of Hades from Hercules. After traveling through the different villain lairs, guests would encounter the most malevolent villain of all, Chernabog from Fantasia. Chernabog would spread his huge wings, menacing the riders while fire demons danced around him. In a terrifying twist, guests would suddenly plunge into a deep abyss. Unfortunately, only vague concepts for this project ever materialized, and the entire idea was abandoned for unknown reasons. To this day, there hasn't been a dedicated area for Disney villains in the parks. Some may argue that it goes against Disneyland's ethos of being the happiest place on Earth, but I think we can all agree that it would be pretty cool to see a place dedicated to our favorite bad guys come to life. Number 9. Mount Fuji Roller Coaster In 1982, while people enjoyed walking around and listening to Eye of the Tiger on their Walkman, Disney was preparing to introduce a new and exciting addition to Disney World called Epcot. Epcot had been a dream of Walt Disney since the 1960s, and it aimed to showcase technological innovations, science, and global culture. There were plenty of attractions at Epcot to captivate visitors. However, one ride could have made it even more amazing, the Mount Fuji Roller Coaster. The World Showcase pavilions at Epcot celebrated different countries, and a private company typically sponsored each pavilion. For example, the American pavilion had funding from American Express and Coca-Cola, which is quite American. But this sponsorship system caused an Imagineer's idea to be discarded. Prior to its opening, the Imagineers were brainstorming concepts for the Japan pavilion, and they had their eyes set on featuring an iconic Japanese landmark, Mount Fuji. They envisioned a small replica and an exhilarating roller coaster that would race through the treacherous peaks. However, there was a problem with Kodak. Although Kodak did not sponsor the Japanese pavilion, they were a major sponsor for the Imagination Pavilion in Epcot. It is believed that Fujifilm, Kodak's fierce rival, was in contention to sponsor the Mount Fuji exhibit. Naturally, Kodak, being a significant Disney sponsor, likely objected to a partnership between Disney and their competitor Fujifilm. As a result, the necessary funding for the ambitious project could not be secured. Instead, the Japan Pavilion at Epcot was sponsored by a Japanese department store chain called Mitsukoshi, albeit for a smaller amount. This resulted in the impressive but noticeably Mount fuji list pavilion that exists in it today. In essence, they opted for a cheaper alternative. It's quite disappointing because, after all, it's just a mountain. Number 8. The Nightmare Before Christmas Ride if you visited Disney's Haunted Mansion during the Christmas season in recent years, you might be familiar with its transformation featuring characters from Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. This spooky upgrade has become a seasonal event, but did you know that there was once a plan for a permanent ride based on the movie? It was originally intended to be located near the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. The ride would have taken guests on a thrilling journey through a meticulously recreated world from the film. Picture yourself sitting in vehicles designed to resemble flying coffins as you soar through the enchanting scenes. To reach the ride, you would queue through the eerie Halloween Town graveyard. Once on board, you would help Jack Skellington save Christmas, and along the way he would also catch the attention of Sally. In the final scene, they would share a heartwarming hug in the snow, bringing the ride to a satisfying conclusion. The exact reason why this ride was never built remains uncertain. It is likely due to the high cost of replicating the movie's intricate details in real life. Additionally, with several similar narrative-driven rides already in existence, Disney may have felt that the Nightmare Before Christmas ride wouldn't attract the desired audience. Nowadays, Disney tends to prioritize exhilarating experiences with thrilling twists and turns. 
Nevertheless, it creates an incredible atmosphere when Jack and his gang take over the haunted mansion during Christmas. Perhaps it's for the best that the permanent Nightmare Before Christmas ride was never realized. It allows the haunted mansion to continue its tradition of charming spookiness while the seasonal transformation adds a touch of holiday magic. Number 7. New Countries at Epcot Epcot, as a place to showcase the best the world offers, features distinct areas dedicated to specific countries. However, what visitors see today is quite different from its initial vision. Over the years, numerous ideas have been proposed, making it nearly impossible to imagine how the park would look if any of them had come to fruition. For example, the Denmark Pavilion was envisioned to include a captivating Lego canal boat ride and a faithful recreation of the world-renowned Tivoli Gardens. On the other hand, the Costa Rica Pavilion was intended to be a splendid space highlighting Spanish colonial architecture, adorned with stunning plants, animals, water features, and traditional cuisine. The Iran Pavilion, which was planned from the park's inception, would have taken guests on a captivating ride through Persian history complemented by a bustling, bazaar-like marketplace. The Russian pavilion aimed to offer an unbiased account of the country's history and serve as a cultural experience for visitors. Additionally, there were plans for an Israeli pavilion featuring a cluster of lively market stalls, a Spanish pavilion with two exhilarating water rides, an Australian pavilion boasting a replica of Sydney's iconic opera house, and a Swiss pavilion with a daring recreation of the Matterhorn Mountain and a thrilling version of the Matterhorn bobsleds encircling it. Unfortunately, various factors led to the abandonment of these plans. Some proposals failed due to the inability to reach agreements with the respective countries, while others faced financial constraints that prevented their realization. With so many ideas being considered, one can only wonder what Epcot will decide to pursue next. Number 6. Disneyland Singapore Disney has been steadily expanding its reach worldwide since the opening of the first Disneyland in 1955. In the 1990s, Singapore was seeking ways to boost its economy, and what better opportunity than to bring in the lucrative Disneyland? The process began in 1985, when Singapore Airlines sought assistance from an American economics consultancy to develop a plan for enhancing the country's tourism industry. They determined that theme parks, hotels, fast food establishments, and shopping outlets were the key ingredients for success, and they focused their efforts on a designated area called the Singapore Entertainment Center. Unfortunately, after almost 10 years of development, the entire project was put on hold in 1994 due to the unsatisfactory bidding submissions received by Singapore's authorities. Enter Disney. Singapore was already the world's leading consumer of Disney products per capita, making it a prime location for a Disney park. However, following the financial disappointment of the Euro Disney launch in Paris in 1992, Disney was hesitant and sought a deal that involved acquiring a vast 300-hectare plot of land at an unreasonably low cost, with the Singapore government shouldering most of the construction expenses. This proposal was rejected. Nonetheless, Disney had other options in mind and turned their attention to Hong Kong. Unlike Singapore, Hong Kong was more willing to invest and contributed a significant 75% of the initial $3 billion required for construction. Disneyland Hong Kong opened its doors in 2005. Details about what a Disneyland in Singapore might have looked like remain scarce, but we can assume it would have been similar to its Hong Kong counterpart. Interestingly, Asia had its own version of Disneyland as early as the 1960s, which differed significantly for good reasons that will soon be explained. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. There are many forbidden places in the world, and those who dare to explore them may face serious consequences like imprisonment or worse. One such place is a small lake island full of mysteries and myths. Nobody is allowed to enter, especially since Disney abandoned it. Disney opened Discovery Island in Bay Lake, Florida as an amusement park in 1974. It was like a zoo with rare wildlife, similar to Jurassic Park. People visited the island for 20 years, paying $10 for entry. The island's beach was off-limits due to alligator attacks. But why was the island closed and restricted? Disney said people lost interest, but some believe there's more to the story. Speculations include dangerous animals or plants, escaped Disney animals, or even people disappearing. Now pictures show nature taking over the island. Nobody can enter, not even for maintenance. Richard McGuire ignored the warnings and traveled to the island in April 2020. He was arrested, banned from Disney attractions, and faced criminal charges. Why are there so many restrictions? Are they meant to protect people? 
Why was the island abandoned? And why are there no special permissions for Disney employees? These questions spark curiosity about Disney's secrets on this small island. What are your thoughts regarding the content you have just witnessed? Number 5. Discount Disney in 1983, Japan opened its own Disneyland, the first one outside the United States. However, even before Disneyland Tokyo, Japan had another park inspired by Disney. On July 1, 1961, a Japanese supermarket company called Daiye introduced Nara Dreamland, a theme park resembling Disneyland. It had its own version of a princess castle, Main Street, and a railroad. Nara Dreamland also had its own characters, such as Ran-chan and Dori-chan, dressed as beefeater guards. Despite not being as impressive as Disneyland, Nara Dreamland attracted around 1.7 million visitors annually, as it was the closest thing to Disneyland in Asia. Things changed when Disney announced plans to open a resort in Tokyo. With the arrival of Disneyland Tokyo in 1983, attendance at Nara Dreamland started declining. The park's visitors reduced to just 400,000 by 2001. Over the years, the facilities closed down and the attractions rusted. In 2006, Nara Dreamland closed for good, and by 2014, the abandoned site looked weird and dilapidated. Eventually, between 2016 and 2017, the entire park was demolished. Nara Dreamland became nothing more than a dream of the past, and the characters Ranchan and Dorichan reportedly found work at Burger King. However, Nara Dreamland wasn't the only Disneyland knockoff in Asia. During the 1990s, a Chinese property development company called Rainwood Group in Thailand attempted to create its own version. They named it Wonderland and mimicked Disneyland's design with towering castles and spired roofs. Unfortunately, the construction of Wonderland abruptly stopped in 1998, leaving the castle unfinished and some buildings empty. The company ran out of money and couldn't complete the park. The site was eventually demolished in 2013 and replaced by a shopping mall. So, while Disneyland brought joy, these knockoff parks ended up as sad, deserted places. They couldn't replicate the magic and success of the original. Number 4. Darkest Disneylands Disney is about dreaming and believing in magic, but the street artist Banksy thinks differently. In 2015, he created an art installation called Dismaland which was a sarcastic parody of Disney's cheerful theme parks. Banksy criticized manufactured happiness, cultural dominance, consumerism, and some negative aspects of Disney's history. He described Dismaland as a theme park for the unhappy. Located in Weston Supermare, UK, this temporary park showcased a different side of Disney. There was a decaying Sleeping Beauty castle, an overturned Cinderella carriage with paparazzi waiting to capture the accident, and balloons that said, I am an imbecile. It was unsuitable for children, but cleverly mocked Disney's influence. Unfortunately, Dismaland only existed from August to September 2015. However, it gives us a glimpse of what could happen if Disney were to disappear, as imagined by artist Michael Feeney. Feeney's artwork shows a post-apocalyptic Disneyland after a zombie invasion. The eerie photoshops depict a castle fit for a Disney villain, among other dilapidated scenes. Philip Hodas also explores ruined Disney parks in his 3D art. From a dismembered Olaf to a rusting giant Mickey's head, Hodas creates a world that is truly sad. These artistic renditions resemble actual abandoned Disney locations like Discovery Island and River Country. But these run-down Disney sites will eventually be rebuilt and revitalized. Disney parks are designed to evolve continuously. Walt Disney himself said, Disneyland will never be completed. It will continue to grow as long as there is imagination left in the world. This constant change allows us to look back at old photographs and remember the happiness they brought to families. Disney is about dreams, but Banksy showed a different perspective. Dismaland was a temporary park that mocked Disney's cheerful image. Artists like Michael Feeney and Philip Hodas also imagine a post-apocalyptic Disney world. However, Disney parks will continue to evolve and bring joy to families as long as there is imagination. Number 3. The Great Muppet Movie Ride Shortly before Jim Henson's passing, Disney's MGM Studios experienced resounding success with the opening of one of its most beloved attractions, the Muppet Vision 3D Experience. Inspired by this triumph, plans were set in motion to expand the Muppets' presence in the park. Among the envisioned additions was the Great Muppet Movie Ride, 
a playful parody of another popular attraction, the Great Movie Ride. In this new adventure, guests would have embarked on carts, journeying through a series of movie sets brought to life by the Muppets. Imagine the delight as visitors traveled through scenes from iconic films like Frankenstein and Peter Pan, each one recreated with a Muppet twist. In true Muppet fashion, comedic mishaps would ensue, entertaining audiences of all ages. Every cart would have been accompanied by animatronic versions of the infamous heckling duo, Statler and Waldorf, providing witty commentary as the Muppet chaos unfolded. The ride would have been brimming with Muppet-style humor at every turn. Imagine the laughter as horses on the set cleverly made the sound of galloping by having coconuts attached to their shoes. And in a whimsical snow scene inspired by Dr. Zhivago, Kermit and Miss Piggy would have found themselves inside a giant snow globe, playfully rocked back and forth. Regrettably, the plan to bring the great Muppet movie ride to life faced an unexpected hurdle when the proposed merger between Disney and the Jim Henson Company fell through. It was a tremendous disappointment, for this attraction surely would have become the talk of the studios, a delightful blend of nostalgia, humor, and Muppet magic. Number 2. Plectu's Fantastic Intergalactic Review In 1990, Disney made an exciting announcement known as the Disney Decade Project. As part of their plans to upgrade the parks, they revealed their intention to replace Disneyland's Tomorrowland with a futuristic version called Tomorrowland 2055. The goal was to create a more advanced and futuristic atmosphere while bringing ride concepts from other Disney parks to Disneyland. Among the new ideas was the centerpiece of the project, Plectu's Fantastic Intergalactic Review. This captivating stage show was designed to replace America Sings and would have taken the form of a carousel-type performance. It promised to showcase musical acts from all corners of the galaxy, similar to the beloved country bear Jamboree, but with an exciting space and alien theme. The music would have had familiar roots, yet with a distinctive intergalactic and enchanting Disney twist. This project embodied classic Disney storytelling, featuring stunning animatronics, captivating character designs, and a fantastical narrative. However, the plans for Plectu's fantastic intergalactic review remained in the concept stages, never to be fully realized. Financial difficulties faced by the company following the launch of Euro Disney and the hesitance of CEO Michael Eisner to approve the $200 million budget for the reimagined Tomorrowland led to a change in plans. Instead of building significant new attractions, the decision was made to give the area a fresh look with minor aesthetic changes. As a result, the intergalactic review concept was shelved, and the Carousel Theater, where it would have taken place, found a new purpose as the Star Wars launch bay. Number 1. David Copperfield's Magic Underground During the 1990s, David Copperfield reigned as the world's most famous magician. It was only natural for Disney to collaborate with him on an exciting new project. The result was David Copperfield's Magic Underground, a groundbreaking concept for a themed restaurant. The planning had progressed so far that billboards were erected near the entrance of Disney MGM Studios and on Hollywood Boulevard, creating anticipation for its imminent arrival. The project aimed to establish multiple restaurants, one located at the studios, another in Times Square, New York, and additional venues in each international park. These magical eateries would be adorned with enchanting decorations and paraphernalia, creating an immersive dining experience. Magicians would circulate among the tables, wowing guests with their tricks, and dedicated areas would be designated for grand illusions. The Times Square venue was said to be 85% complete among the planned locations. It boasted a magnificent 45-foot-tall statue of David Copperfield, surrounded by towering 18-foot-tall gas torches. The stage was set for an extraordinary spectacle, captivating visitors and bringing the magic to life. However, the project met an unexpected end due to creative differences and soaring costs. Just like one of Copperfield's astonishing illusions, all traces of the project vanished, leaving no signs of its existence. The cancellation of David Copperfield's Magic Underground resulted in a staggering estimated loss of $34 million. It is unfortunate that this ambitious venture never came to fruition. The vision of combining the art of magic with the joy of dining was an exciting prospect that many eagerly anticipated. Which of these abandoned ideas would you have been most interested in witnessing? Let us know your answers in the comments below.